Hello friends, hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by today. Uh, and today I am in Luminar Neo. I did a video recently where I made mention of layers and uh, I had a number of people say, hey, will you do some videos about layers? Kind of explain what they are and that sort of thing. So uh, I will and I am. And uh, this is the first in that group of videos about layers. Now they all won't be done in a row. So there's a number of different features in layers I need to kind of work through and get it all together. But this is the first one, and this is really kind of a beginner's guide, for lack of a better term. Uh, but having said that, that doesn't mean it's not applicable to people that have already used layers before. So I'm going to dive into that here in today's video in Luminar Neo. Let's get going with this wonderfully exciting black piece of paper. Now, uh, the first thing I want to do uh, when I talk about layers is kind of define what it is. A layer is just a stack of one image on top of another. You have your base layer, like some photo. You have another photo you stick on top of it, and all you're doing is taking some elements of the photo on top and painting or masking, blending that into the image on the bottom so that the resulting image is a combination of the parts of each image, the parts that you want to show. That's where the masking comes in. So all it is is image, image. It could be multiple layers. doesn't matter, but all you're doing is stacking them in a layer. You're layering one on top of the other. And so that's really what it is. And to get to layers, of course, if you're here with an image on the left-hand side, you can see layers. And there's, uh, it's pretty simple. The, uh, the blue is highlighting or uh, outlining, I should say, the photo that I'm on, which is the current layer, the only layer, because this is the base photo. I'm going to call it a photo, even though it's just a black piece of paper. And to add a layer, of course, the big plus sign is the obvious thing to do. And so you're going to add a layer by clicking plus. Now, when you do that, this little side menu opens up. And they've included some overlays or layers. Uh, the terms are sometimes used interchangeably. Some people will call everything just a layer. Some will call everything an overlay. Some people will call things textures. Textures are overlays. A lot of these terms are used interchangeably. But I think of these as being kind of overlays where you have this stardust, bokeh, sparklers, light leaks, and flares. All of these are included. And so these are categories that are included. And then you have something called My Images, if you've already uh, added images of your own that you'd be using as layers. I, of course, have. And you can either use that arrow to go through them, or you can click See All, in which case you can see there's lots of different photos that I've stacked and used in layers over the last couple of years that I've had Neo uh, in different image edits or experiments or whatever it might be. Now, if you ever want to get rid of any of the images in here, you can just right-click and you can either show it in Finder, which it'll show you. Uh, that's on a Mac. I assume it's uh, the same Explorer, maybe. I can't remember what it's called on a PC. Uh, or you can remove it if you just want to get rid of that layer because you're never going to use it again. Uh, but I, uh, I'm going to use a few layers uh, in today's video. Uh, I'm going to go back to the main menu. This white uh, piece of paper is what uh, I have. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And as soon as I do, you'll see that my photo turned gray. And I'll explain that in a minute. First, I want to focus on this left-hand side. Now. What you've got is the base layer, the black one, no longer has the blue around it, the blue outline, because I laid the white piece of paper on top of it. The white piece of paper now has the blue outline around it. And what you see is a combination of those two over here. It also, by the way, it opens up this layer properties menu. I'll talk about that in a minute when we get into some of the edits, but I want to spend a moment over here. Now, I can add another layer if I wanted. I could just click plus, and I get the same options, and I can just... Uh, load an image. If you don't have something already, you can just hit load image. That'll open up your file locator, finder, whatever it may be. You go grab an image and click it, and it'll add it to this category, and then one click, and it sticks it on top. I'm not going to use another layer. I'm just going to use this one. Uh, but also, you can right-click uh, on the one on top, because remember, that's the one with the blue outline around it, so it's highlighted. I can right-click. I can hide layer. When I do, all you're seeing is the black, which is the one on the bottom. I can right click to show layer. Uh, there you go. I can right click. I can duplicate the layer, which is going to add another one. And you're, you're noticing that the shade is changing. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Uh, and if I want to get rid of this, I can just click remove layer and I'm back to the gray sheet of paper. So what you're looking at is a blend on top of the white on top and the black on the bottom. Now, why did it blend? I didn't do anything. Why is it blending? And why, if I'm on the top, and that's what I'm looking at, why is it not white? Shouldn't I be seeing the white? Well, the reason why is because of this properties menu over here, and specifically this opacity slider. 
Opacity is just how see-throughable is the, the layer that you're on. At a 50% opacity, you're seeing 50% of the white and 50% of the black. In other words, you're seeing gray. So it's a perfect blend. It's half white, half black blended together. And if I take the opacity down to zero, you're seeing zero of the white. So even though white is on top, it's, essential, it's essentially invisible. So all you're seeing is the black underneath because the opacity is at zero. As I start to increase this, you will see it gets further and further from that dark black and gets closer and closer to being white. And then if I go to 100, it's 100% opacity or completely opaque, which means you can't see through it at all. And the only thing you're seeing is what's on top. In other words, it's completely hiding the layer underneath, which is the black. So this opacity slider is, I'm going to put it back on 50. That's the default. It's effectively your best friend. It's a great tool for allowing you to stick different things together and blend them. And that's really what layers is all about. Now, there's other things here as well, which won't really work on this black and white image combination, but there are blend modes and there's various blend modes available. And uh, blend modes essentially just tell the layer on top how to blend with the layer on bottom. Sometimes it makes it darker, sometimes it makes it brighter. Honestly, uh, you probably need to go Google blend modes and get the definitions of all of them because it's, uh, it's not something I can ever remember. There's a couple of blend modes that I like, but generally speaking, um, it's not something that I can remember exactly what happens, but it's pretty well defined on numbers of websites. You've also got this section here where you can flip and rotate and you've got image mapping. Both of those we're going to talk about in a minute when I give you an example. Uh, anyway, so now I've got half gray and half white. But the beauty of layers is not just that I stuck the white on top of the black and I got half of each coming through so I have a gray sheet. The beauty of layers comes in with masking. Now, if you aren't familiar with masking, there's a beginner's guide to masking that I did recently. I highly recommend that you watch that first because in reality, there's not really much that you'll do in layers if you don't know how to use masking because uh, the idea behind layers is to paint in, blend, stack things on top and merge it all together. And there's lots of things that you can do with that that I'll cover in some future videos. But masking is a critical skill for not just layers, but really for any kind of edit in any product, not just in Luminar. But check out that video if you haven't yet. And by the way, um, I have a full class about masking available for sale on my website. And one other shameless plug uh, for free on my website, if you join my newsletter, you actually get uh, a couple of textures and some presets for Luminar and things like that. So if you want to check those out, because I'm going to use a texture here in a minute, you can have a couple of those for free by joining my newsletter. Okay, back to masking. So you just click on masking and you got various options. We're not gonna use them all, but I'm gonna show you brush, linear, and radial. Now brush mask is just painting with a brush and there's various settings. So when you click it, make sure you're on paint, not erase. So I'm on paint and you can choose size, softness, and strength. Size, of course, is how big is your mouse gonna be. Softness is the difference between those two circles, the outer circle and the inner cir circle, as I'm sliding this, you can see them changing. And what that means is when it's uh, all the way to the right, uh, 100 on softness, then the difference is greater, which means the effect fades. Whereas if it's really hard, those two circles overlap each other perfectly, which means it's a very abrupt change. Um, I recommend, again, checking out that video about masking. And then strength is just the relative strength of what you're applying. Are you applying at 100%, which is 100, or something below that, right? So I'm going to leave both of those at 100 and put the size there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blend this white sheet uh, into that black background or black bottom layer. And as soon as I do with my brush, as soon as I click once, and I'm still holding down my mouse, you will see immediately what I'm seeing is just the underlying layer, the black. And that's because I'm telling Luminar, okay, as soon as I click, start painting. And so as I start painting, the mask that I'm creating with this brush is highlighted in red. And all it's doing is saying this area in red is where the white is going to be painted on top of the black. So I'm going to let go of my mouse now. And when I do, there you go, white on top of black, although it's really gray. And the reason why it's gray is back here on properties. If I want it to be white, then I need to make the opacity 100 so that 100% of that white is applied where I paint. So that's the 
reason masking and opacity go together so well because they uh, they cooperate. They're kind of best friends that allow you to really customize the look of what you're trying to do. The mask lets you be specific about where it's applied, and then the opacity is specific in terms of how much of that effect is being applied to that photo. So I can go back into masking. I'm still in brush, and just to make sure my uh, mouse is visible, I can change softness to zero, and now when I paint, you'll see the difference in the edges. That's the very faded edge, the very uh, general or uh, gradual transition. This is a very hard edge, very rapid transition. So even at 50%, let's say, you're getting full gray everywhere inside where I painted, and then abruptly it's black. Whereas over here, you're getting full gray in the center and it fades to black. So when you're blending things together, most of the time, it's better to have this soft brush because then your transition between things you paint in uh, to the base photo is a bit more gradual and it blends together better. Now I'm going to reset that and go back and just talk real quick about masking with uh, a different kind of brush, and that's going to be a linear gradient, a, a different kind of masking tool. Uh, and once again, it's gray because it defaults to 50%, so I'm getting half the white and uh, half the black underneath. And the linear gradient works the same as it does any other time you click and drag. Again, as soon as I did, it immediately started showing the underlying layer because I'm telling it I'm going to start painting, and I'm painting the top layer onto the bottom layer. So I'm painting white onto the black based on however my linear gradient looks. And so now you can see this transition that I'm talking about, which is gray on the bottom fading to a darker gray and fading all the way into black. And the difference, uh, of course, is if you want to bump up the, uh, the, the opacity, then you're getting all of the white fading into gray, fading into black, whereas over here, you got gray fading into darker gray uh, fading into black. So that's why opacity and masking go together so well. They're just perfect complements to each other. And of course, radial is the same idea where you just come in and you can click and drag and adjust the radial gradient to fit your taste. And there it is. That's gray because on properties, I'm at 50%. And if I go to 100, it's white. Again, 100% white in the middle, fading to gray uh, at the edge and fading to black eventually. And so Masking and layers, two peas in a pod. They go together like peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and chocolate, if that's your preference. But that's the key stuff about layers. Actually, you know what? That's not all the key stuff. Yeah, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that on the next photo. So I'm going to go over to this photo here, a shot I took in London. Now, it's already edited. I'm not going to be using any layers to edit. I'm going to use edit uh, or use a, a layer to do a couple of little creative things that I'm going to show you. And these are overlays or textures that you can apply to photos that are a lot of fun to use. So I'm going to go click plus to add layer and I'm going to add a texture. So let me go find the texture I want. It's already here because I've used it. It's one of my favorite textures. And there it is. There it is. It's been applied and you'll notice it doesn't fit. And we're going to talk about that. So uh, what's currently showing and you can tell the opacity here really well because it's at 50. So you're getting half the texture on top and you're getting half of the uh, Big Ben, London kind of uh, blue hour scene underneath. Well, 50 is too much because the texture is too strong, so maybe 25 is better. But still, it only goes to this uh, certain point, and the rest of that is showing you all the photo underneath because it doesn't fit. And that's where this image mapping section comes in because these two photos are different aspect ratios. The underlying photo of Big Ben is in 16 by 9, whereas this is in a three by two, so they don't fit together. And so uh, that's where these two options, are, or three options come in really. Now fit is just the standard aspect ratio of the image that you're on, fit on top of the other one, but it doesn't fit. So not accurate necessarily in this uh, term, in terms of being descriptive. So what I would do is either fill or stretch. Fill, if I click that, it's gonna expand the size of the uh, layer on top, which is the texture, keeping it in the same aspect ratio until it covers the image. And so if I come over here and do this little trick with my mouse, you can see as I'm making this smaller, you can see what's happened with the texture. It's basically grown in size, maintaining the same aspect ratio, and it now fully covers the image. And in fact, as you can see, it bleeds uh, off, off the edges here because it's maintained the same aspect ratio. The difference between that and stretch is stretch it adopts the aspect ratio of the image underneath it. So it's stretching the texture file to fit into the aspect ratio of the file uh, that's underneath it. 
I'm going to go back to fill for a second because there's a couple of things to be aware of. And you will see as I hover my uh, mouse over here, you can see I've got kind of the, the semicircular uh, double-headed arrow thing. And that is really just because I can twist these textures and make them kind of do whatever I want. And you can also grab these handles and move things in and out to adjust uh, accordingly, right? So if I wanted it to be tilted for some reason, then I can come in and, you know, as you can see here, I've, I've stretched it and expanded it on my own. It's maintaining the same aspect ratio, but I can expand that uh, in order to cover things if for some reason I need to tilt it or twist it in a certain direction. Not something that happens a whole lot, but uh, it's useful just in case. Here's a good example of fit. Let me click that. And you'll see that that is back to the regular size. And so I'm going to go back to more of a full screen mode and I'll go to fill. No, actually, I'll just go to stretch here because it doesn't matter really. Um, and in this case with textures, this is where blend modes can come in handy because these blend modes are going to change the way the top layer blends with the one below it. So as I hover over these, you'll see that the texture and thus the resulting photo look different, right? So the each of the different um, blend modes has a slightly different look to them. And I'll admit, in fairness, as I said earlier, it's kind of hard to remember what the differences are, but I generally use normal or overlay, sometimes soft light. Uh, there's not a lot of other ones that I experiment with, but it's worth looking at because sometimes you come up with some really cool and interesting stuff. And, uh, you know, it can be really useful. Luminosity is just going to take the light value. It does not use any of the color. So if you saw that texture, it's kind of orange. Luminosity is not going to take the orange. It's just going to take the texture from it. So that's kind of cool. Whereas, as you can see, in normal, I'm picking up some of that color. So actually, I think Luminosity is a better blend mode for this photo because I like the colors of the uh, blue hour look. I just want to add a little bit of texture to be fun. And there you go. That's an application of a texture, which is a layer. Uh, this texture is an overlay. An overlay is anything that you lay on top. So all those flares that are included with Luminar, those are overlays. Textures are overlays. But there's other things that you can do with image layers as well. And um, that includes blending multiple photos together, not textures or overlays or anything like that, but actual photos to get different effects. I'm going to show you one other idea here. I'm going to remove a layer. So I'm back to my edited photo and I'm going to click plus layer and I'm going to grab this one here, which is rain. Uh, it rains in London. Everybody knows that. And so sometimes you want to do something a little creative. You can go find an image of rain that I downloaded from somewhere on the web. And maybe I'll click fill or stretch. I'll just do stretch. And there we go. I've got a nice looking rain overlay. So I've got a rainy blue hour in London that I didn't have before. And that's because I added the rain overlay. And anytime you want to hide it to look at your layer underneath, hide layer, there's my photo. And if I oops, come back here and click here, show layer, and my rain is back. So that's the basics of layers and a couple of ideas of things you can do, textures or overlays like rain in this case. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of creative things that you can do. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of other things you can do with layers as well, not to mention all these other layer properties under masking where you can use portrait background removal or background removal AI to do some really fun and custom and unique things. Also, you can blend multiple exposures together. There's a lot you can do. So I'll do some more videos, not all in a row, but leave comments down below about other uh, layer ideas or video needs that you have, any uh, training ideas. I'd be happy to do more videos about it. Hopefully this gives you a good uh, solid start to working with layers. And the truth is, just experiment, have fun. You're not going to break anything. And the way you learn it is probably by doing it like a lot of us. And you can do it by just playing around with it. So hope that helps. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.